And I think one of the main challenges with anticipatory grief is that it just doesn't want you to be in the moment. I was smiling and thought that this is going to be a beautiful moment to remember someday, instead of thinking that this is a beautiful moment to experience right now. A shout out to anxiety, I guess. It pretty much just means that you know that something is about to change. Just terrifies you. And I wish I could say that these five days were just blissful and 100% happy, but I was also constantly overstimulated. Hi from Future Editing Me. While I was looking through all of these videos, I got a very strange and very strong case of imposter syndrome and thought that what I was going to say here, in a very cheesy way, wasn't relevant or interesting. Then I was about to procrastinate the whole video because I'm a foolish perfectionist who would rather stop doing something than only doing it halfway. And today I was on the train to my family and I was reading a book about high cortisol stress levels and pretty much everything I've been talking about in my previous videos. And I realized that maybe what I'm about to talk in this video, like anticipatory grief, fits perfectly into the whole 50,000 who the hell am I ADHD therapy puzzle I've been trying to figure out and put together in the last couple of years. Because in the book he says that a stressor, okay, the thing that can cause like an acute or a chronic stress reaction in our bodies, represents the absence or the threatening loss of something that our organism perceives as something vital for our survival. And that might sound a little complicated, but while I was on the train I feel like I was kind of annoying everyone because I was highlighting everything because it made so much sense to me. What that basically just means is that we may feel a constant subtle stress reaction because something makes us feel that something we need isn't there or will not be there. I think all my life I've been trying to kind of make sense of that bittersweet feeling of loss, lost futures and unlived lives and bittersweet loves and kind of all of these roads we're not walking down, all the people I have in my life that I love so much and just don't want to lose, but while I'm with them, I constantly feel like at some point I am going to lose them. And that's a stressor. And what I'm understanding now is that this is probably one of the root causes for my chronic stress levels. I feel like all I ever wanted was stability and peace of mind, but I always felt like it could be taken away from me at any given moment. A shout out to anxiety, I guess. In the book he says that there are universally three reasons for stress reactions, and they are uncertainty, a lack of information, and a loss of control. So I think I just wanted to say that if you're a little like me and you feel that constant pressure to perform and masking ADHD and that future anxiety and fear of losing people and stability kind of leads to high cortisol levels, then some kind of chronic stress reaction and maybe this video of me babbling about anticipatory grief and a trip with my real parents might make sense after all. So uh, cheers. Let's go back to the video. While I'm sitting here in probably one of the most beautiful places, I've been thinking a lot about the trip to Vienna. I went on with my grandparents. Like how do you cope with the fact that the people who are at your home will just gone too soon. Sometimes you feel like you don't really have enough time to give them back everything they gave you to make them proud. One feeling that's been following me around for quite a while now is anticipatory grief. And it's been such a huge topic for me in therapy this year. Because that, combined with my extreme fear of losing people and stability and my home, just turned into a constant feeling of potential loss for months now. And that's kind of like a shadow, like something that's literally haunting you. But this is supposed to be a bittersweet, nostalgic diary slash Vienna Prague vlog. 
because I may be sad and afraid. But I also took my grandparents on a road trip with me to Austria to go to Mozart concerts and eat schnitzel and made my grandma live out her wildest empress sissy dreams. And I know I said it here before, but I grew up with my grandparents, so they are kind of like my parents to me. There has always been that scary, subtle shadow of knowing that their lifetime and mine won't overlap as much. I mean, they have lived a full lifetime while I'm still figuring out how to live mine right. So for their 64th wedding anniversary, I planned a trip to Vienna because for most of their lives they took care of others before ever putting themselves first. They took care of their parents and then adopted my mom and then took me in and then took care of the dogs. And I know that they mean it when they say that they wouldn't trade a single minute off all of this. But when I turned 18, 19, 20, I slowly understood the sheer amount of blood and sweat and tears and heart they poured into me and my future and my happiness. I just wanted to give something back, even if it's just memories, or especially if it's memories. So when I first heard the term anticipatory grief, I looked it up and it's the the stress a person may feel in the days, months, or even years before the death of a loved one or any kind of other impending loss. And I read a quote that hit pretty close to home because Alison Warner Lynn said, it's the experience of knowing that change is coming and starting to feel bereavement in the face of it. It pretty much just means that you know that something is about to change and that change and the feeling of something or someone not being there in the future just terrifies you and goes hand in hand with all sorts of other emotional reactions like depression, irritation, anxiety, insomnia. And there is no blueprint for that because everyone deals with loss in a slightly different way and it's the same with anticipatory grief because it's a certain form of grief for me, one of the main things I notice when it comes to anticipatory grief is that I feel this intense urgency to create lasting memories with my grandparents. And I mean, I was always that way. I collected Polaroids and handwritten letters, made cheesy photo albums or collages or double or triple saved all of the playlists from every single year of my life because they felt like the most accurate description of certain chapters of my story and my therapist said that that in itself is a beautiful way of coping and for a long time I didn't really believe her because I always framed it as a desperate attempt to hold on to something, anything. I saw myself in these literal or metaphorical epic scenes in movies where I sit in my future house and I look through old boxes of memories and and I find all of these photos and letters and everything just comes rushing back and it feels like the people are not really gone. Something lingers, like something or someone is still there. For most of my life, me and my grandparents spent whole months in Denmark by the coast. And after I moved out, I kind of tried to hold on to that ritual of spending spring months and Christmas and birthdays there just in a silent companionship. And over the years, of course, I see the decline in health. And at the same time, I'm super grateful that they are still the way they are, both physically and mentally, when you consider that they are both well over 80 now. But knowing that my grandma worries about my grandpa and my grandpa worries about my grandma and takes me aside to tell me that my grandma's forgetting things and I joke that sometimes even I forget the names of old classmates in school and that has been like, what, seven, eight years? And he says that she forgot my mother's name for a whole afternoon. So when we went on our little Prague and then Vienna road trip, I vow to take as many videos and photos as I can to remember the silly jokes my grandpa tells since my childhood days or the story my grandma tells how she fawned over an actor when she was 17 and my grandpa just smiles to himself but because he's like, well, I got her in the end. Or the way they shyly dance to classical music or my grandma fixes my grandpa's tie because she knows that when he's excited his hands shake a little too much. 
And I wish I could say that these five days were just blissful and 100% happy, but I was also constantly overstimulated and anxious that it wouldn't be as perfect as I wanted it to be for them and also for me. And I think one of the main challenges with anticipatory grief is that it just doesn't want you to be in the moment. While my grandpa was singing old drinking songs with a musician in the oldest restaurant in Vienna, I was smiling and thought that this is going to be a beautiful moment to remember someday, instead of thinking that this is a beautiful moment to experience right now. I think trying to hold on to memories so tightly sometimes just makes you forget that they are happening right in front of you. And I often felt like I was trying to be so present because I wanted to be there and I wanted to be with my grandparents. But because I wanted it so much, I was trying so hard and I wasn't there at all. When we think of anticipatory grief as like the apocalyptic writers, then it always comes with its two companions and these are probably guilt and regret. Because you know that you want these moments to be extra precious and special. Like walking through the rose gardens in Vienna where people dedicate the flowers to their loved ones. Or eating ice cream in the rain. Or going on a carriage ride and seeing all the sights and the city. But most of all seeing the smiling faces of my grandparents. Because they are reminiscing about those childhood days when we were at the Baltic Sea and I was always so mesmerized by the carriages there that I always begged my grandparents to go on a little carriage ride. And another big part in my experience with anticipatory grief is probably everything that comes with trying to shield other people from your own grief. As an easily overstimulated introvert with an ADHD brain, stuck in a body that is mostly running on cortisol for most of my life, there were moments during this trip where I just needed time alone. And for the longest time, I just couldn't understand why in the world I felt so irritated by simple questions and comments from the people I loved the most. When I told my therapist this, she just looked at me and said that rule number one is that unexpressed feelings will find a way of coming out if you want to or not sooner rather than later and if we don't let them out it usually happens in a way we don't really want to so by not admitting that i was grateful and happy to be there but also terribly terribly afraid of imagining a future without my family i kind of made it worse because these repressed feelings made me feel constantly on edge and overwhelmed and just haunted by what ifs and what thens in a way that made me do exactly what I didn't want to do. I think a lot of the time when it comes to anticipatory grief we try to shield people from our negative emotions. When it comes to my grandparents I just don't want them to worry about me worrying about them and I don't want them to look at me in that strange way when I come home and look around and they just know that a part of me is looking around because it is home, but the other part is looking around to memorize everything that makes it a home because I don't know how soon everything could change. So many people search for a definition for home for most of their lives and I've found mine, I have mine and I know that at some point I have to learn a new definition. I think for us it was always the elephant in the room because we know that time is a hungry beast. Like that old song I used to listen to when I just moved out. But especially sharing grief and openly talking about it still feels like one of the biggest challenges for me emotionally. 